Well, first tonight, Peter Dutton says he suspects police officers have been instructed not to arrest pro-Palestinian protesters for hate speech. I've done an exclusive interview with the opposition leader where he says that journalists at the ABC have been acting as activists. He also said that university chancellors should be named and shamed for failing to stamp out anti-Semitism. But some of his strongest comments were for the Prime Minister himself and also on the question of why law enforcement has been so, has been so reluctant to actually enforce the law when it comes to hate speech. Peter Dutton, who's a former cop himself, says it would be frustrating for police not to be able to take strong action when they see violence, unrest and lawlessness on our streets and in our university campuses. There's no doubt in my mind that for the average police officer that this would be completely and utterly offensive as well to be told to stand back um, with your hands in your pockets. Do and you think they are being told that? There's no doubt in my mind uh, because their instinct would be that if they saw somebody breaking the law... Setting uh, fire to a flag, for example. Yes, that they would enforce the law. Now, I did this extensive 45-minute interview with Peter Dutton last night at an event to raise money for JCA, which funds security for Jewish schools. Now, Peter Dutton's view is that under the current law, people could have been arrested for hate speech, both at the Opera House protest and at protests on university campuses. Now, even the Prime Minister has said that chants of intifada and from the river to the sea have no place in our country. But the Opera House protests had worse, racist chants of where's the Jews, F the Jews, and despite police denials, what many people heard, gas the Jews. There is existing scope within the current law for some of these people to have been arrested, either on the steps of the Opera House, on the university campuses, and they haven't been. For, for, could I clarify, arrested for hate speech? Yes, yes. And, and, and everything is in context, but if you look at uh, the chance and the intimidation that's taken place, uh, I don't accept that that is not against Australian law. And the fact that the police have been told, uh, either by the police ministers or they're taking a lead from what they see through the Prime Minister's commentary or, or lack of it, uh, that they're just there to maintain the peace. Uh, this is just another Middle Eastern, you know, fracas, and that uh, we don't want to take sides and let's just allow people to protest. Uh, that, that, that is a complete and utter outrage. And I think most Australians are outraged by the inaction as well. Very strong comments. Now, there will be a federal election held inside the next 11 months. Dutton said if he were Prime Minister... He would tell the head of the AFP, ASIO and other law enforcement agencies to be strong and actually enforce the law. That there shouldn't be some carve out of the law just because the topic relates to Israel and the Middle East. Dutton said that if there are concerns about the law, that shouldn't stop authorities from enforcing it. Instead, test it, he says, and if it needs to be changed, we'll then change it. In times of tragedy, uncertainty, the leader of our country has to stand up. And I think had I been Prime Minister at the time, um, not I think, I, I would have made it very clear to the Australian Federal Police Commissioner, to the Director General of ASIO, uh, to the police commissioners otherwise, uh, that I had zero tolerance for this behaviour and conduct and that the police should enforce the law without hesitation uh, not go beyond the law, and if the argument is that some elements of the current legislation are unconstitutional, that should have been tested before the courts. Now, Australia's former ambassador to Israel, Dave Sharma, who's now a Liberal senator, well, he also spoke at this event for the JCA last night, and he backed up Peter Dutton on the need to actually use the hate laws against people who break them and breach the peace. The first step in doing that is at least to test it. If the law is found yes. to be wanting here, well, then we can fix the laws. Now, Peter Dutton also criticised journalists at the public broadcaster 
for being activists. The ABC has not covered the anti-Semitism our country is facing in any in-depth way, while Sky News has produced an entire documentary with Josh Frydenberg, along with nightly coverage on each of our primetime programs. It's simply incomprehensible that the ABC hasn't properly covered this anti-Semitism crisis. Well, here's what Peter Dutton said about the ABC and Fairfax last night. I think the ABC and you could rattle off half a dozen others uh, are full now of, of uh, these protesters and advocates uh, and they allow their own emotion and political ideology to overtake their objectivity as a journalist. And I think, as you pointed out before, uh, the, the news stable uh, and Sky have been without compromise. And you contrast that to what we've seen in nine papers or Fairfax, uh, there is always a divide, uh, but the, the abrogation here, I think, uh, um, highlights the, the real problem that we've got within parts of the media um, that don't have that objectivity, and it's, it's going to be a feature ongoing. On university campuses, we've seen young Australian Jews have to face hatred and aggression and anger from protesters on a daily basis. There have been videos posted to social media of activists saying they're going to chase Zionists off campus. And a professor was exposed by The Australian just last week for wrongly saying that the sexual violence of October 7 was a hoax. Well, I asked Mr Dutton about all of this last night and he said university chancellors should be named and shamed. Have a look. The level, low of capitulation and, frankly, facilitation of the anti-Semitism, almost the, the encouragement of it through the inaction, the lack of leadership from not just the chancellors and the vice-chancellors, but, frankly, the senior leadership within the universities as well, who, who should all be publicly named and shamed. Uh, we do this to... There's, there's a scrutiny from time to time on CEOs or chairs or board members of particular companies. Uh, we, we should be asking these people how on earth they justified what has happened uh, and what in some cases is still happening. How, how, how is it conceivable that you would ask some of these people to sit around the table with you to make future decisions, as you say, in relation to the direction of the university when these people have been shouting from the river to the sea or Itafada or the harassment uh, and the language uh, toward young women on campus? These same people who would be uh, lecturing on pronouns and uh, and, and gender policy, somehow uh, their, their mind turns blank uh, because that young girl is Jewish. Uh, and, and I find it uh, reprehensible. On the question of immigration, Peter Dutton said he thought it was incomprehensible that the Albanese government was bringing Palestinians from the front line of the war zone into Australia without adequate security screening. And he spoke about when he helped Azidi women enter the country during the wave of ISIS terror and how it took weeks to conduct biometric screening using data held by US intelligence. I think the migration program should be in our best interest and if we're bringing people in, for example, uh, I've been critical of the Prime Minister's decision to bring in literally thousands of people from Gaza during the course of a war. I, I, it's beyond my comprehension. It does take time, the weeks that you were talking about, before you can get confirmation back. And if we're bringing people in from a war zone at the moment with uncertainty around identification or background or motivation, and those checks haven't been done, then I think it's a complete abrogation, and I think it puts our country uh, and certainly the Jewish community at, at, uh, at even higher risk. Well, there's a lot of commentary about whether Dutton has a shot at winning the next election. Albanese is facing a detainee crisis and he's refused to accept his immigration minister isn't keeping our country safe. He's also presiding over a cost of living crisis with families, even when both parents work, struggling to afford housing and some are even living in cars. 
At the same time, Albanese has been criticised for high levels of immigration that have put even more pressure on the rental crisis in Australia. Despite failing in almost every policy area, Albanese is expected to win more seats than the coalition at the next election. Many polls predict a minority government or a hung parliament. Well, I asked Peter Dutton his own assessment of whether he could win the next election. Even though the first-term government hasn't lost since 1931, the best outcome from a Labor Party perspective is that they could form a minority government, which would include the Greens and the Teals, uh, and potentially, as you say, uh, Muslim independent candidates from Western Sydney or perhaps uh, elsewhere uh, in Melbourne, for example. The, the reality of that is that, yes, they would be compromised even further in terms of their stance. And I think, as we saw during the period of the Gillard government, where there was a formal compact with the Greens, uh, there was a drag to the left. And I think that is at odds with where most Australians are at. And he spoke about how most Australians just want to improve the lives for themselves and their children. Pretty basic. Well, Dutton needs to win 19 seats to form majority government. He acknowledged the challenge ahead, but said he believes he can get there. So 19 seats, do you think you can get there and how? Well, the, the short answer is yes, I do. And, and as I say, 12 months ago, people weren't contemplating anything other than a second term and perhaps a third term for, for the Albanese government. We need to make sure uh, that we have the policies and that we have the candidates uh, and that we can communicate that effectively. And I, I believe very strongly when you go seat by seat, uh, when you look at our prospects around the country, as we did in 2016 or as John Howard did in 1996, uh, there are opportunities for us in Western Australia, uh, opportunities for us in South Australia, uh, certainly in New South Wales, in Western Sydney and the Central Coast. And he went on to outline the areas where he thinks he can pick up many seats. Dutton spoke about his concerns that the Albanese government would form an alliance with the Greens. Well, you heard some of those remarks already, but he really does worry about where this would lead the country because in some of his strongest remarks on the Greens yet, Peter Dutton said that Adam Bant leads a party of hate. And Dutton went so far as to call the Greens an anti-Semitic party. There is a, a real danger, if that were the scenario, uh, that uh, somebody like Adam Bant, who is a, uh, running an anti-Semitic party, uh, they're a party of hatred, and that they would be in government, uh, I, I think is a shocking consideration, but that is one of the prospects after the next election. In the meantime, under Labor, Australia's relationship with Israel has fractured in a major way. There's immense dissatisfaction with Australia's foreign policy since October 7, from Israel's perspective. And this is at the very highest levels of the Israeli government. Well, Peter Dutton pointed to the importance of Australia's relationship with Israel. He said, as Defence and Home Affairs Minister, he received intelligence from Israel over a long period of time. Intelligence that resulted in the thwarting of terror attacks and lives being saved. He said that rebuilding that trust would be a priority if he were Prime Minister. The relationship's been long-standing and it's in our mutual interest for us to rebuild that relationship, which has been damaged. There's no question of that. Uh, and I think we need to apply ourselves to that. And when I think of my colleagues... Uh, here today, and uh, Julian or, or Sarah, uh, Holly, Dave Sharma, others, James Patterson, uh, many others, uh, I know that in government uh, we could, in very quick fashion, uh, really reassert ourselves into the relationship and make sure that it, uh, it grew with the strength that it needs to um, in a very quick time. So Peter Dutton there was saying all of the shadow coalition ministers who were at the event the JCA event to raise money for the Jewish community, including to provide security for Jewish schools. Now, he mentioned there Sarah Henderson, Holly Hughes and others, Julian Lisa, Dave Sharma, who were all there to support the JCA. At a state level, Kelly Sloan was also there. 
Can you imagine, can you even think of four or five or six members of the Albanese Labor government who would turn up to a Jewish fundraiser? Nothing about Israel, a Jewish fundraiser to help raise money for Jewish security. I couldn't name five myself. I would love to be proved wrong. Now, last night, some of Peter Dutton's most cutting remarks were reserved for the Prime Minister himself. After viewing comments that Anthony Albanese has made in the Parliament over the years on Israel, Peter Dutton accused him of taking an anti-Israel stance throughout his career for political purposes. And Peter Dutton was brutal. Our assumption has been, Sherry, as you pointed out before, that this is all about Penny Wong's influence and that Anthony Albanese is taking direction or is subservient to in the conversations Penny Wong's views. But it's obvious that Anthony Albanese either had a heavy influence at university or, and more likely in my judgment, he's very early on in his parliamentary career decided that to hold his seat of Graindler, he needs to have this particular view. And in my mind, I always say to school kids as we go around uh, to speak to the school um, children in our electorates, that there are good and bad on both sides of politics. But people who sell out their values, their beliefs, or indeed their country for cheap political gain, I think are the worst people in our business.